Hi everybody, Gardner Raymond here again from ConsequenceVideoDesigns.com and the other day I showed you how to make the titles from the Art of Flight using Plexus and I noticed some other questions online specifically about how to use Plexus as a mat to zoom into footage or uh, to kind of alter footage that falls within the Plexus. Um, so real quick, here's the example of what people were asking about. Uh, over here on the right hand side, you'll see when the Plexus comes through see how it's uh, enlarged a little bit inside this this bit of plexus here as it goes through and then again at the towards the end here with Mark Landvik here we go right here another another example here with this piece right here uh, and this piece right here and actually this piece over here too um, in this shot this triangle actually and then this triangle here is just simply a mat uh, or a mask drawn uh, with another layer on top and enlarged and, and stuck on there. But uh, for this little bit here and like back here in the beginning, uh, to get the enlarged piece to move with your plexus, it's, um, it's pretty simple. So real quick, let me show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, here's an example showing like it is in that, that Mark Landvik shot. Uh, when we play, let this play through here. It's not going to play through real time. I didn't render it. But basically, all this is is, oh, and I actually made a little a uh, little bit of color in there. Um, all this is is one layer. Let me turn on my masks here. Uh, hit mask, and let's change the color so you can see it a little bit better. All I did here was duplicate the layer, draw a triangle mask on here, and enlarge the scale. It's 114 percent. And then all I did for the plexus to get it to match up was I just created some lights. I uh, created two separate plexuses uh, on the same layer and just aligned them with my mask there. If I, if I turn this off, you can see it's just this mask here. And even if I solo the layer, there's the foreground layer, there's the background layer, and then turn the plexus on and let's unsolo this. And then the plexus, let me, lines up with these. So as it plays through, it kind of looks like it's within the plexus, but in a shot like this where the shot's stationary, you don't really need, and, and you haven't tracked your plexus points to anything particular in the shot. You've just laid them in. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, let me let this render through here real quick, and you can see what they did in that Mark Landvik shot too is uh, they kind of pop the color a little bit for uh, a couple frames. So I did that here too. There's a little pink flicker, a little blue flicker, and there you go. And that's as simple as I just added a tint effect and then animated the amount to tint level as it went through there. Okay, but let's show you how to do it with some footage that's actually moving here. So what I did was I took this footage, I brought it into Mocha real quick. Mocha tracked all these shots as it... Uh, uh, tracked all these different leaves as it went through the shot, exported that tracking data basically just as transform data, brought it back into, into After Effects here, created the nulls. I have them hidden back here. I duplicated them. These are all null objects. If I turn them back on, you can see all the null objects that live in here. Created all the null objects and then used the sweet null swapper script, which I have in here, scripts null swapper. Uh, if you want that, it is, uh, where did I do it? There it is, Safari. Just do a Google search for null swapper. It comes up. It's a, it's a great little script from David Torno. It's free. And basically what it does is exactly what it says. It, it takes these null objects and swaps them, swaps all the tracking data that's on them uh, and applies it to lights. Uh, which have the same name as as your uh, your null objects here, um, because Plexus uses lights and not null objects for the points, and it also works well if you're using Trapco Particular. Uh, so I did that. I swapped them. They are all stuck in here, and then I created my Plexus. There's my uh, couple layers objects. All of them. There's probably a little bit extra in here that I don't need these to get rid of since they're not there. And just created this basic plexus here. 
So what I want to do is take a part of this plexus. I want to make this little triangle here where, uh, where Aaron rides through and give it that effect that you see in here. So the plexus tracks with the objects in the shot, but it's also enlarged a little bit. So what I did was instead of just adding a triangulation renderer to all these plexus points here, which what happens if you turn that on, you're going to get a whole bunch of points uh, or a whole bunch of triangles uh, created between the points, depending on your maximum distance, uh, your opacity. You can, uh, you can do opacity that's only, you know, triangles only appear that distance. So you get a, you get one triangle in here, or you could do you know, maybe another one, and another one, kind of make this little sawtooth pattern here. And, and you might end, might end up getting what you want, but you might end up getting too much. And, and this is going to take a lot of trial and error to get if you just wanted this triangle to show up uh, to be affected. So instead of doing that, let's figure out the points that create the triangle that we want. So it's going to be this one, this one, and this one. And let's duplicate them. So it's this top leaf. Let's duplicate it. And I'm going to rename this one right away. I'm going to call this Try Light 1. And I'm also going to change the color here just so it's easier to see, so it stands out. Let's change it to orange, and let's uh, drag it up to the top. Oh, drag it up to the top. Take this one, duplicate it, rename it. Rename it, Try Light 2. Drag it up to the top. And this one right here, duplicate, try light three. And just change these at the same time so they're all orange. So we're going to create a new plexus. Let's do, uh, let's just create a new solid, plexus two, effect robite plexus. And let's create some new geometry here. Layers, all lights. We want it to only apply to lights that start with try. So these three right here. We don't need a points renderer. All we want is a triangulation renderer. So once we have that, let's start boosting up our maximum distance here until the triangle appears. So there we go. And let's make the opacity, let's make it fully opaque. Just in case we like it fully opaque. That's opaque enough. So now as we scrub through the shot, we can see that, that triangle stays in place with the rest of the plexus. So now we take our plexus 2 and our three tri lights, command shift C to pre-comp them. I'm going to call this plexus mat. Hit OK. And now all we need to do is duplicate our clip that we want, put it underneath the plexus mat, and then change our track mat to a luma mat. And we also want to take this and put it below our original plexus layer, because you can see when it's on top, it covers up these lines and it kind of overlaps. It overlaps halfway between the other lines that were there. So we want it below the original plexus so the original lines show up. Now you're not seeing anything but that's because no changes have been made to this clip. As soon as I change this, let's change the scale, there we go and we can change the position here. So now as we scrub through the clip we can see that that little section just there in the plexus is magnified. And it's as simple as that. There are plenty of other things you can do uh, I think this is the same thing. Yep, this is the original one that I worked with. Uh, you can change the color, so this is the same scale, but as he comes through, his shirt changes colors. And I did that just with a uh, change to color effect. Um, we, You can animate the opacity of the matte layer, because remember, the matte layer is just a white solid. And when you make the track mat, it just turns that off. So you can just animate the opacity of that solid and have it flicker on. And I just desaturated this clip in this version. 
and then have it fade out and it goes back to normal. Uh, you can create a still if you want. So as he comes through, you get a freeze frame. And then with this, you just do some time remapping there. And then if you wanted to, you could, let's see, let's copy this freeze frame, let's paste it here, and then let's copy the original, the beginning keyframe, and paste it here. So now when this goes through, it's gonna go up, freeze for a few frames, and then reverse. And then freeze because it doesn't go all the way back to the end. Uh, you could even, uh, you can even put a mask on your matte layer. So change this mask color again too, to uh, make it red. And then you can animate that mask. So instead of using the opacity of the matte layer, you could use a mask to just, so let's uh, Command Shift H to hide the guides there. So you can see right here, it's got a soft edge on it. Feather, 17 pixel feather, kind of animates on, so it's enlarged here. This is just an enlarged version. And then it kind of animates off and it's back to normal size again. So it's really easy to, to uh, do whatever you want with uh, using Plexus in this manner, using it as the mat. Um, again, simple way to do it. Uh, to just line it up if it's a shot that's not moving and even if this shot was moving and we have these points animated a little bit you could you could simply animate this mask uh, this mask that's on uh, over time you could animate the mask path um, because in an instance like this if you wanted your plexus to look exactly like it does here uh, but just say you know this moves to here over time and then this moves to here over time uh, you know moves down to here or something so these just have uh, some let's do that and let's do this nope go up to there and then this one one up there there, goes to here, and then at the beginning, I want this back right on top of the tree. So as we go through this over time, that plexus moves, but then this, this mat stays the same. But if you wanted to change that, you could just simply animate this mask, mask path. and then animate it to right there, kind of animate it to right there. So now as that moves across, it's gonna move with this line here. And the only reason you'd wanna do that instead of using the plexus mat is because these are two separate plexuses set up with a, a light here and regular light here. So this is, these are three points and then four separate points um, comprised of two different layers objects in the plexus. It's not gonna create the triangulation between these points. So you could do that if you wanted, um, but it's, uh, you know, duplicate the lights like I did in the other in the other example. Um, but for something like this, uh, if you just want the mat to line up with your plexus and it's simple enough to do it this way, you know, just do it this way. Like in all of video editing and graphic design, there are many ways to do the same thing. But hopefully you learned a little bit from this. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to post them and let me know. Thanks a lot.